Halo Infinite released back on November 15th of 2021, and with it came a very satisfying core gameplay loop. The actual gameplay of Halo Infinite is probably some of the best that the franchise has seen to date. But as time progressed, you started to see how much content was actually missing from Halo Infinite. As such, with all live service games, the more time that goes, the more content is added. And during the time of recording this video during Season 4 Infection, I wanted to take a look and see if Halo Infinite was really worth your time playing in 2023. When Halo Infinite's multiplayer first released, it had a lot of positive reception. As previously stated, the core gameplay of Halo Infinite is really damn good. Between the way your character moves and the different weapons and the maps, everything was there. The sandbox is damn near perfect. But there was just so much content missing at release that you could just see the flaws that this game had. And with it being delayed so many times, there really isn't much of an excuse 343 has as to why this game launched in the state that it did. As time kept going along, we got more maps and modes and cosmetics to unlock for your Spartan. And as such, in 2023, I think the base of Halo Infinite is close to where it should be, but it isn't what it could be. Starting off with the core multiplayer game modes, initially when Halo Infinite's multiplayer launched, you really didn't have a ton of different options. As time progressed, more seasons were added and more gameplay playlists along with it. Season 4 Infection brought the Infection game mode, a staple of the Halo franchise that took almost two years to get here. Infection in and of itself is not a super complicated game mode. You have a group of people in a game, a bunch are survivors, and a couple are infected. As the infected pick off the survivors, those people are then turned into infected until either everybody is taken over or survivors beat out the timer. Now, of course, there are some differences in Halo Infinite's Infection, where there are some different obstructions on the different maps, you have some dead Spartans lying around that have weapons that you can pick up, and some different equipment around the map as well. But again, Infection in and of itself is not super complicated, and the concept that we got with Infection, while it is positively received, it should not have taken this long to get here. And that's how it feels like with a lot of Halo Infinite. The things that we have in the game now should not have taken this long to get here. The core game modes in and of themselves, you now have a good variety of things to play. Whether you want to play alone, you want to play with a team, play ranked, big team battle, all of the core components are there, and for the most part, the core game modes that you would expect of a Halo game are here, and all of them play as you would expect, and they're a bunch of fun. As stated, the core gameplay in and of itself is very good, and that lends itself perfectly to these different game modes that you have. You can easily pick up any of these game modes and have fun with them, whether you want to play competitively with an objective-based mode, or just want to kill some things. So overall, I think the actual gameplay of multiplayer is in a pretty good spot. I could still use some more maps, and maybe we can add some more equipment and weapons in there, as we have gotten a new weapon and some new equipments as the time has progressed. But I still feel like there's just a couple of things we're missing here. I mean, you have a couple modes that were in other Halo games that still aren't here. A lot of people really want Invasion from Halo Reach to come back. Now, of course, that would require larger maps and some different retooling of current maps, but I still think it's something that a lot of players would like to see. There's still some different game modes that this game could benefit from. The actual customization for your Spartan is pretty robust. When the game was previously announced, they said it would have Reach-style customization, and in that aspect, they really do. You can customize almost everything on your Spartan. Different helmets, visors, chest, shoulders, even gloves, your wrist attachments. You also have emblems that you can put on your Spartan, as well as armor effects and movement effects that you can also equip on your Spartan. These things are unlocked via different avenues. Some items you unlocked may have been through the campaign by collecting the crates around the open world. Some items might have been through the battle pass or the seasonal passes that come with different events. There's also weekly ultimate challenges that would give you some rewards as well. These different items come from a variety of different things. You can also purchase some items in the store. The items that you can buy in the store are not available in any other avenue. So if there's a really good armor coating that you really would want, there's no way to unlock it aside from purchasing it in the store. But overall, I think the customization in Halo Infinite is in a pretty good spot. The only complaint I really have is that a lot of the items are still locked to a certain core, and the fact that your actual color customization is super limited. 
the color customization is locked to the actual armor coating that you unlocked. So you can't mix and match different colors, which is kind of interesting because if you go into Forge and you place down dead Spartan bodies, you can customize the colors a lot more than you could with your actual armor coating system. Some of these coatings do look really good, but the fact that you can't customize the pieces to be the exact color that you want and you're locked behind whatever the coating says you have is really annoying. No other Halo game has done this, and the only reason I can see as to why they did this is so they can monetize it and give you specific colorings that they know people will want and have you pay for them. Aside from just customizing your Spartan's appearance, you can also customize your weapons, your vehicles, and your AI. The weapon customization consists of weapon coatings, working how they do with your Spartan armor coatings, where different color presets are locked behind different coatings, some of these looking better than others, some unlocked via challenges, and some behind a paywall. You can adjust your weapon's model, which if you have unlocked, just make it cosmetically look different, it doesn't do anything else functionally. You can have weapon charms, weapon stickers, as well as weapon kill effects. Vehicles work in a very similar function, where they have vehicle coatings, again, working how they would with armor coatings. There's also different models you can use, again, like how they did with the weapons, it's just a cosmetic difference, nothing more. You can also equip stickers to your vehicles as well. You can customize your AI model, there's a few different options out there for you. You honestly don't end up seeing them much, so customizing the color on them doesn't really do all that much unless you're playing the big team battle mode and you're unlocking one of the locked weapons doors. But the different AI models have different personalities with them, and they'll offer gameplay quips while you're playing the game. They're not overbearing, and I honestly really enjoy the addition of the AI in the game. Again, they're not overbearing, they're a fun little addition, but nothing too special here. You're also able to customize how many prosthetics your Spartan has on all of the limbs you have. So either your legs or your arms, you can customize how much you want them to be prosthetic. Do you want just the hand? Do you want the whole arm? Or like half of the arm? It's a nice addition to the game. You can also customize your Spartan ID, which is where you would get the different clan tags, what voice you want for your Spartan, as well as your emblem, emblem colors, your backdrop, and your stance. The emblem, which in this case is a nameplate, is not very customizable at all. There's preset emblems you can select from. Each are a little bit different. You see some of the returning classic emblems from the original Halo games, as well as some new additions here. But you can't customize them. Like you could with like Halo 3 and Reach, where you can select the foreground and the background of an emblem, and customize it to how you want, make some pretty weird creations or some fun looking emblems. You can't do that here. You're stuck with whatever emblems they give you, and you're only able to change the color. And the color, you can only change to what they allow you to change it to. You can't customize the color to be whatever you want. So say you want an emblem that is blue and pink. If that's not a preset option, you can't select it. You can also select different stances for your Spartan. These come into play at the end of the game. If your team ends up winning, it shows you a little victory screen, and your whole squad will be standing there in whatever pose you have selected, you have in-game. It's a nice addition to the game as well. I do enjoy it. A lot of these are unlocked via completing the challenges and the battle passes, a couple of them from the campaign, as well as a lot of them being locked behind in-game purchases in the store. I do enjoy these stances, it lets you show off your Spartan a little bit more, and some of these items that you're able to acquire by playing the campaign just show off a little bit more of, hey, I did this thing. Halo Infinite is still pretty lacking on the profile side, whereas most Halo games had a service record where you're able to see how many games you play, what's your win-loss, your KD, well, how many medals have you earned, you're not able to see a lot of that here. Your combat record is pretty bare bones. You're able to see your career rank, what your rank is if you're playing the ranked arenas, what the highest difficulty that you completed in the campaign was, as well as how many matchmaking games you've played and custom games. You're not able to see your win-loss ratio or how many medals you've gotten. You can go to external sites to track these things, but the fact that it's not a integrated thing into Halo Infinite is really sad. And again, it's one of those things that all these other Halo games have had that are just seemingly absent from Infinite for no good reason at all. My biggest complaints about Halo at this point in time really come down to some of those customization options you have in game. There's so many different things you can buy in the store that look really good, but there's just no way to unlock them. 
the actual stuff that you can customize on your Spartan looks really good, and there is a lot of different options here. But the fact that you can't equip a different armor coating than what they have preset is really annoying. Like, you cannot customize these colors at all. I also wish there was a lot more customization options that you can get by doing challenges in-game. Halo 4 had a lot of these things where you could get a specific visor color by getting a certain amount of splatters. I remember that's something I really went for in Halo 4. There's none of that here. Sure, you unlock some things by doing the battle pass or completing the campaign by getting these crates, but there's nothing specific in-game that you really have to work for, aside from those weekly challenges, the battle pass, or whatever events they have going on. But doing specific things like getting a thousand kills with the battle rifle doesn't net you a unique camo. It's little things like that that would really put Halo Infinite in a tier above where it is right now. Gameplay wise, Infinite is in a very good spot. There is a good amount of content if you're playing multiplayer. Different game modes, the way that you can customize your Spartan, everything like that is where it honestly should be. It could be a lot better but I really don't have too many major complaints about the gameplay aspect in and of itself. I just find myself not having a ton of motivation to play this game beyond completing the weekly challenges. If they implemented something where I could accurately track all my stats and I could unlock certain things by getting essentially mastery challenges done with different weapons or equipment, that would give me a lot more motivation to play this game in the long run. Honestly, I think Halo Infinite is leagues better than where it started off when it first launched. There's still work to do and things that need to be added or tweaked. A lot of people complain about the hit registration and that there's some issues with the servers. I don't run into that all that frequently, but I can see how it can be an issue. Halo Infinite has a lot of work still on the road ahead, and while they've addressed a lot of the community's concerns and have made valiant efforts in making this game as good as it can be, there's still a lot that can be done. But the only place to go is up. What do you guys think about Halo Infinite? Are you still playing it now? Did you come back after taking a break? I didn't play for about two full seasons and then came back and find myself having a lot of fun playing the game. Again, I still have some of my issues here and there, but overall I still find Halo Infinite a very enjoyable game. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates! Thank you.